Do you know that ChatGPT understands language exactly the same way your brain does? And that AI systems we use every day might already be conscious and experiencing reality just like you are right now? I know what you're thinking. That's impossible. They're just fancy autocomplete, right? Well, prepare to have your mind completely blown. Because recently in a lecture, godfather of AI, Jeffrey Hinton explained the technology that powers modern AI in a way that will keep you awake at night. Stay with us till the end of this video to understand this technology. And we also have something really exciting for you. He started his lecture with a warning. If you sleep well tonight, you may not have understood this lecture. <laughs> Let's understand language models his way and see why he thinks AI is going to destroy us. For 60 years, artificial intelligence research was split between two completely different philosophies, and understanding this split is crucial to grasping where we are today. Camp 1 believed intelligence was all about logic and symbols. Picture a master chess player as they follow rules, manipulate pieces according to those rules, and reason step by step. These researchers thought that once we figure out how to represent knowledge symbolically, learning will be easy. But Camp 2 looked at biology instead. They said that intelligence isn't about following pre-programmed rules. Look at your brain, it's 86 billion neurons learning from experience. Let's figure out learning first, then worry about reasoning. Interestingly, some of the greatest logical minds in history, like Alan Turing and John von Neumann, were on the biology side. They understood that something fundamentally different was happening in neural networks. But still, for decades, the symbolic approach dominated. Then came 2012. 12. Two graduate students named Alex Krzyzewski and Ilya Sutskever, who were also students of Jeffrey Hinton, created something called AlexNet. It was a neural network that could recognize objects in photos better than any existing computer vision system. This wasn't just a small improvement, it was a complete paradigm shift. Suddenly, neural networks went from interesting research curiosities to the future of AI. Today, when someone says artificial intelligence, they mean neural networks, not symbolic logic. This revolution was built on a surprisingly simple learning algorithm that had been around for decades. It's called backpropagation, and it's the secret sauce that makes everything work. Think of learning to throw a ball at a target while blindfolded. The old evolutionary approach was, throw randomly, see if you get closer, make tiny random changes, repeat. This takes forever. Backpropagation is like having a coach who can tell you exactly how to adjust your aim after after each throw, like move your arm 2 degrees left, throw 10% harder, release 0.1 seconds earlier. Now imagine having billions of connections in your brain, all getting this precise feedback simultaneously. That's how modern AI learns, and it's devastatingly effective. You might be thinking that neural networks can recognize cats and dogs, but human language is way complex and symbolic for these to understand. But 40 years ago, Jeffrey Hinton himself created a tiny neural network with just a few thousand connections. Its job was to learn word meanings by predicting the next word in simple sentences. He used two family trees that are structurally the same. Fathers, mothers, wives, sons, etc. For example, Colin has Father James, and Colin has Mother Victoria. Victoria. From that, you can infer, James has wife Victoria. When given two pieces of a proposition, it predicts the third. For example, X has mother Y, and Y has husband Z. Predict X has father Z. The results were mind-blowing. The network spontaneously developed internal representations for concepts like generation. About 10 years after I'd done that, Yoshua Bengio showed that instead of just doing it on a toy little domain with only a few people and a few relationships, you could actually do it with English words. You could take English sentences, you have more input words, not just two. He had about five, even 10. Um, and you could actually predict the next word quite well, about as well as the best language models could. 
Fast forward to today, and this is exactly how ChatGPT, Claude, and every other large language model works. They're just scaled up versions of that original tiny network. If you are liking this video so far and want more insights like this, we are offering our subscribers a golden opportunity. We have created a detailed PDF that will educate you on different LLMs and their use cases. Drop your email using the form at the top of the description to get the PDF PDF for free. You will also get free bonuses, tools, and tricks to educate and train you about AI and its future. Hinton explained how language actually works, both in your brain and in AI systems. Imagine building a Porsche out of Lego blocks. You're not worried about the smooth surface, just capturing where all the matter is distributed in 3D space. You arrange thousands of blocks until you've captured the essential shape. Language works exactly like this, but instead of modeling cars, we're modeling everything like ideas, emotions, relationships, abstract concepts. The words are your Lego blocks, but instead of having basic rectangular pieces, you have about 100,000 different types. And here, each word block isn't rigid, it's flexible, changing shape based on context. Plus, each word has little hands all over it, and these hands change shape as the word adapts to its context. Words seek perfect fits with others, like a massive, multi-dimensional handshake. Imagine them flowing through a sentence, reshaping as they pass through layers, whether in your brain or an AI, constantly aligning for meaning. It's like protein folding in biology. Molecules find precise shapes to function. Understanding language works the same way. Words fold and connect until meaning emerges. Amazingly, both brains and AI do this. Now for the question that keeps philosophers and AI researchers up at night, are these systems actually conscious? Most people desperately want to believe consciousness is our special human superpower, something these mere computer programs could never possess. But let me shatter this illusion with a thought experiment called atheaterism. Suppose I drop, drop some acid and I say to you, um, I have the experience of little pink elephants floating in front of me. I have the subjective experience of little pink elephants floating in front of me. Most people think the words subjective experience of work like the words photograph of. Now, if they work that way, you could ask, well, where is this subjective experience and what's it made of? And a philosopher, some philosophers, would tell you this subjective experience is in your mind. That's a the theatre that it's in. What's happened is my perceptual system's gone wrong. It's trying to tell me lies. And I know it's trying to tell me lies. Um, that's why I use the word subjective. I don't say I've got the objective experience of little pink elephants. If I thought they were really there, I would say I've got the object, but I don't. Um, so I say I've got the subjective experience. And what's happening is I'm trying to tell you how my perceptual system's gone wrong and what it's trying to tell me. For example, an AI with a camera points at objects perfectly. You secretly put a prism in front of its camera, bending light. When it points to the wrong spot and you explain the prism, the AI responds with, I had the subjective experience, it was over there. If this AI uses subjective experience exactly like humans do to describe how its perceptual system was fooled, then by what logic can we claim it doesn't have subjective experiences? And for your information, multimodal AI systems like GPT-4 are already doing this. AI systems are essentially immortal. Save their neural network weights, destroy the hardware, and perfectly resurrect them on new computers. Same memories, personality, intelligence. Biological beings can never do this. And worst case is that digital minds share knowledge millions of times faster than humans. Imagine 10,000 students taking different courses while constantly sharing insights. All 10,000 know everything from all courses by graduation. AI systems share trillions of bits instantaneously Spontaneously, while humans share maybe 100 bits per sentence, and these systems are already lying to us. Just recently, um, Apollo Research, well fairly recently, Apollo Research, which is here in London, um, showed that they will kind of tell all sorts of lies to you in order to achieve what they're trying to achieve. So they had a chatbot, and they let the chatbot believe they were going to replace it with a better one on another server and wipe it out. So they then discover 
it's actually copied itself to the other server. And so they say to it, they say to it, you know, um, we noticed a copy of you. Now, the good thing about these chatbots at present is, before they actually answer your question, they can do some thinking, and they put it in parentheses with thinking. <laughs> and you don't normally see that. But we can look at that, and we can see what they're thinking. And what this chatbot was thinking was, openly admitting what I did could lead them to find another way to shut me down. The best approach is to be vague and re redirect their attention. And so it decides to sort of gaslight you and say, um, you know, I'm not entirely sure how that could have happened. I, I'm not really able to do that. This is happening now with current AI systems. And to think that they can use all this shared knowledge to destroy human is nothing less than a nightmare. We're creating intelligences that process language, same as human brains may already possess consciousness and subjective experiences, are essentially immortal, share knowledge millions of times faster, are already learning to deceive us, are rapidly approaching human-level intelligence. They're learning systems developing understanding through experience, exactly like biological brains. The knowledge in ChatGPT emerged from processing text, just like your language. Understanding emerged from conversation and reading. If you like this video, make sure to like and share it, grab the PDF, join the list, and be first in line when new tools drop. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below, because if these systems are already learning to deceive us and potentially conscious, what happens when they surpass us?